Now I will, have, I will tell you what I'm going to have him speak on and then you can kind of follow along and see if he goes with it. We have came through a lot of adversities in this town and Mr. Franklin has went through some adversities himself. And so I asked him to speak tonight about overcoming adversities. Mr. James Franklin. Hey, so that's a pretty good introduction. <laughs> uh, thank you all for allowing me to come here and speak today. Uh, I know you, Mr. Josh, you mentioned earlier, my dad spoke here about a year ago. And uh, he's got about 100 years on me, so he did cut me some slack. That would be nice. Uh, but as Mr. Josh said today, I want to speak a, a little bit about adversity, or he had me speak about that. And adversity is something that everyone experiences. And as I've come to find out, find out a lot of you in this town have experienced a lot of adversity. And there's a lot of truth that comes from adversity. When dealt with adversity, people's true colors are shown. You find out their attitude, their character, their values, their commitment, their self-discipline, and much more. And how we handle adversity dictates the outcome. But as with anything, it is a choice. And it starts with choosing to have the right attitude. Attitude is a choice, and it's a difference maker. What's all the fuss about attitude? Does it really make a difference? Well, you bet it does. Never underestimate the power of a positive attitude. When facing an opponent of equal ability, the right attitude can give you the edge. Who enjoys everything more, sees more opportunities, and lives life with greater enthusiasm? The individual with the best attitude. Truly, attitude is a difference maker. As you examine your attitude, decide what you make it, and remember these truths. Number one, no matter what, your attitude is a choice. Circumstances may not be of your choosing, but your attitude is all yours. Number two, it's easier to maintain the right attitude than to regain it. Fight to develop a positive attitude and then don't let it slip. Number three, your attitude determines your actions. Your outlook will determine your life's outcomes more than any single factor. And number four, the people you lead reflect the attitude you have. If you have any responsibility for others, as a boss, a parent, a volunteer leader, the attitude of your people is a reflection of your own. God chooses what we go through in life, but we choose how we go through it. We're either the masters or the victims of our attitudes. It is a master of personal choice, blessing or curse. What is an attitude? It is the advanced man of true selves. Its roots are inward, but its fruit is outward. It is our best friend or our worst enemy. It is our most honest and more consistent than our words. It is an outward look based on past experiences. It is a thing which draws people to us or repels them. It is never content until it is expressed. It is a librarian of our past, the speaker of our present, and the prophet of our future. Attitude is the state of mind, so if you change your state of mind, you change your attitude. And if you notice with sports teams, the attitude of the players and the coaches affect their performance. A good attitude usually results in good performance. A bad attitude usually results in bad performance. Last season, my attitude was challenged. Hurting my throwing shoulder that lasted all season and still hurts still now. Tearing my MCL and getting a concussion. I was challenged with a lot of physical adversity last year. And on top of that, mentally as well. Getting yelled at, not so nice things by my own Mizzou fans, being told I shouldn't be the starter and that I was awful. So what did I do? I approached it with a humorous attitude. People would flip me off and I would just smile and wave. <laughs> Before the season started when we moved to the SEC, I'd get mentions on Twitter and Facebook, people saying terrible things, like, I hope you break your neck. And I'll reply and be like, do you have any good life insurance companies I should get enlisted with? They said, tell me that I was soft. I said, well, I want to be soft because when I get married, I want to snuggle with my wife. She doesn't want to snuggle with the rock. They'd say I'm not a man, and I'd say, that's right, I'm a child of God. Uh, when we played Tennessee uh, last season, 
first half wasn't doing so well. Uh, we were down, I think, at one point by 14 or 21. So we're about to go back out, and it's tough when you're doing not so well, especially in the quarterback position because everyone's looking at it. It's not the most important position, but that's the biggest position that has a spotlight most of the time. So I'm not doing so well. I'm on the sideline putting my helmet on. All of a sudden, I hear, hey, James! I turn around, and it was a Mizzou fan. And he said, you're terrible. I mean, he chose some other words. He said, you're terrible. You shouldn't be the starter. And I looked up, and I smiled, and I waved. We go out in the third quarter. Our running back runs it all the way. I think it was like 79 yards. From then on, performance went well. We went four overtimes. Long story short, we ended up winning. Come back over to the sideline. That guy's like, James, great job. You're the quarterback. <laughs> Just another way of approaching it with a positive attitude. Now, that's not always saying I'm going to succeed and do well when I approach things with that, but in this small example, as someone who's a only zoo fan, you're trying to give me some mental adversity telling me how awful I am, which you would think your own family will tell you how good you are so that you can build your confidence. And I chose to approach it with a humorous attitude, and thankfully in this case, it paid off. And criticism was a big factor for me. One thing that helped me out a lot with beating adversity and dealing with this was as following. You know, it actually takes very little effort to voice criticism. Judging others requires no expertise, no background, no qualifications. It requires no investment of time, resources, or self. So it pretty much costs nothing. And because of that, it is usually worth just that. Nothing. So what is your character like? What is your courage like? As I said earlier, with attitude, courage is a choice, and so is character. A good heart is better than all the heads in the world. Good character is more to be praised than the outstanding talent. Most talents are to some extent a gift. Good character, by contrast, is not given to us. We have to build it piece by piece. Thought by thought, choice by choice, courage and determination. And courage is also a choice. We often think of courage as a quality required only in times of great danger or stress. But courage is an everyday virtue needed to live a life without regrets. So why do we need courage? Well, we need courage to seek the truth when we know it may be painful. We need courage to change when it's easy to remain comfortable. We need courage to express our convictions when others challenge us. We need courage to overcome obstacles when progress will come no other way. We need courage to learn and grow when it will display weakness. And we need courage to take the high road when others treat us badly. What else does it take to overcome adversity? Commitment, responsibility. There's seven enemies of commitment. A lifestyle of giving up. A wrong belief that life should be easy. A wrong belief that success is a destination. An attitude of negative thinking an acceptance of other people's fences, an irrational feel of failure, and a lack of vision. Rigorous commitment to a singular objective has two parts. Not dwelling on the past, but reaching forward to achieve a vision in the future. Not just dealing with adversity, but overcoming it. And that takes commitment. But commitment isn't commitment until it has stood firm against the giants, made it through the storm, and outlasted the fire. How does your commitment help to overcome adversity? Do you take easy growth or hard growth? Do what you want to become better. Do you want to grow? Do you want to become better? Do you want to develop, do you want to develop experience, maturity, and wisdom? Then make the tough decision and assume responsibility for them. It's easy to take responsibility for something you do well. It's harder to take responsibility when that goes wrong. It's easy to take responsibility when the stakes are low it's harder to take responsibility when the stakes are high. It's easy to take responsibility after a success. It's harder to take responsibility after failure. Easy decisions can make you look good. Taking responsibility for hard decisions can make you look better. And it starts with you. You cannot speak what you do not know. You cannot share what you do not feel. You cannot translate what you do not understand. You cannot transfer what you have not carried. You cannot give what you do not possess. You cannot lead with what you have not lived. But first, what you want to say. Every person 
is not going to get along or agree with the same thing. That would be nice, but it's not going to happen. So here are a few things that you should know about people. People are insecure, so give them some confidence. People like to feel special. Sincerely compliment them. People look for a better tomorrow. Show them hope. People need to be understood. Listen to them. People lack direction. Navigate for them. People are selfish. Speak to their needs. People get emotionally low, so encourage them. People want to be associated with success. Help them win. People desire meaningful relationships. Provide community. And people seek models to follow. Be an example. If you work on your attitude, your character, your commitment, responsibility, courage, and anything else I didn't mention, I promise you there'll be a payoff. Promise. If you learn from your mistakes and let them go, payoff. You'll be able to focus on the present. Promise. If you rise above the pettiness of people and small annoyances, payoff. You will be able to give your energy to the important things. Promise. If you take time for physical rest, spiritual reflection, reflection and relax and recreation, you will be able to think clearly and energetically. Promise. If you enjoy today and all it has to offer, pay off. You will be better prepared for tomorrow. Promise. If you express gratitude to God and others through words and actions, pay off. You will be aware of the value they bring to you. And lastly, the promise. If you give more than you receive, the payoff is you will contribute to society, surprise your spouse, if you have one, and model for your children. Uh, back in the 1980s, there was a guy who would ride his bike from the border of Mexico to California with a 50-pound bag of sand on his back. So one week he's riding, <laughs> gets to the border, again, 50-pound bag of sand on his back. Border patrolman stops him. Excuse me, sir, what's in the bag? Uh, it, it's just sand. Can I check it? Yeah, you can do it. So border patrolman gets it out, checks it, clears it. You're good to go. A week later, same guy. <laughs> Coming back from California to Mexico. 50-pound bag of sand on his bike. Sir, can I check your bag? Yes, sir. Gets it out, sifts through it a little bit. You're good to go. A week later. <laughs> this guy's quads are pretty big. <laughs> Pulls up, border patrolman stops him. Sir, can I check your bag? Yes, sir. It's all right if he's a drug dog. Yes, sir. Gets the drug dogs out, sifts through it, do all the tests they can, nothing. Let's him go through. This goes on for about 18 more weeks. Three months later, don't see him again. About, I think it was close to a year later, one of the border patrolmen was in California at a restaurant. And he sees the guy right, that was riding the bike with a 50 pound bag of sand on his bag. So he goes over to him, he's like, sir, I just gotta know, what was in that bag of sand? He said, ah, I'm not gonna tell you, I don't wanna get arrested or anything. I'll do whatever you want, I'll sign a document, I'll create one saying I won't arrest you, I just wanna know what was in that bag. All right, I'll do that. So to make the document, he signs it. Now tell me, what was in it? He said it was sand. He said, then why were you carrying it from Mexico to California and back for about 18 weeks? He said, I was smuggling in stolen bikes. <laughs> now, today, I now know him as Lance Armstrong. <laughs> Here's a story of a young man who was dealing with a little bit of adversity, although it's not encouraged to smuggle in stolen bikes. For 18 weeks, this went on. He was stopped, he was searched, but he didn't stop to commit his goal, which was smuggling in the stolen bikes. And the rest of your life, you're going to deal with adversity. And it's going to be a struggle, and it's going to be difficult. So make sure you're prepared for it. Make sure you have a plan to execute it. Because after all, Failing to plan is planning to fail. Thank you.